We're launching ourselves in a four-day challenge through the plateaus of Peru. We just found a flamingo! I traced out a whole track in the middle of the mountain. All right, let's go! We are Nick and Mathilde, and in 2022, we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia, and Africa. We want to see it all. This is day 482, and we're in Peru. Welcome to the next Meridian Expedition. Somewhere in the Peruvian Andes mountains. Even though we're out of the Cordillera Blanca, we're still in a mess of mountain roads with like roadblocks all the time. Construction this time, I think there's been like massive landslides. So here we have Algo, big tracks all along. And we've been stuck for half an hour, but it's becoming the new normal, I think, like to struggle through the streets. Trying to see what's happening. Ali Albo, Ali Albo, make your way through. This doesn't seem to be over. Oh no. <laughs> They're putting a giant machine just in front of us. It does not look safe at all. No. Last week, we traveled through the Cordillera Blanca in Peru. Although it is quite remote, it remains a touristy location. But we liked the remoteness so much, we decided that this week we will push it a bit further and go on to get lost in much less renowned mountain ranges. This week, we get lost in Peru. Good morning! We're launching ourselves in a four-day challenge through the plateaus of Peru. It's about 3,000 to 4,000 plus meter altitude. Only gravel roads, off-roads. Uh, we're using our off-roading mapping system to make sure we don't get lost. The idea is we probably won't have much network for the next uh, four days. We do have the Garmin satellite phone for backup if anything, but I think we'll be fine. We do ask from time to time to people if the roads are open or if there's any landslide, but so far it looks good. We're really excited to test this out. Completely remote, all alone, for the next four days. Let's go. challenge when you embark on less known roads is that it is a toss of a coin. You really have no idea whether the huge detour you are making is going to bring you anything. And life did things well and put much more than nice landscapes on our road. And that's how, shortly after taking the road in the middle of nowhere, we met Doris and Ruth. Buenos and Nico. Si. Sí. Si. Sí. Si. Sí. Si. 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 Si.
we picked up two Peruvians at 4,850 meters altitude going to the next village, which is a 30 minute drive. So we said, sure, we can bring you. So it's uh, the mother and her kid. Um, incredible, I love it. We loved so much this unplanned encounter with Doris and Ruth that we almost forgot to film the incredible landscapes around us at that point. Eventually, we arrived to her village. Mimi, ¿tienes aquí? Tienes los. Aquí. Tenemos este es el. La bandera de Perú. Tú lo puedes poner para nosotros aquí. Preguntamos a alguien del país en cada país de poner la bandera de su país en nuestro carro. Perfectly, okay? Well, thanks. Muchas gracias. Sí, gracias. Este es el Perú. Literally nothing around us except for cottages, farms, animals. But apart from that, nothing, still no network. Uh, we've already been on the road now for four hours. And really just driving up and down the valleys. There's an event in the village just here. And it's interesting because you see like probably all the cars of the area because we don't see many cars. And also all the horses for, from everyone who came by horse. We're not too sure what it is, but it looks like a Está en una reunión, señorita. Hola. Hola. Una reunión. Okay. Venimos Pachamanca. ¿Qué es Pachamanca? Pacha Pachamanca. De ganado. Ah, ganado, o que es la viand. Ajá. Es el lindo la Pachamanca, pasa por ahí. Está, está listo. Ya está preparado ya. Puedo mirar cómo es. Puedo mirar arriba. Ahí está, ahí está la viña, claro. Ok, solo mirar. Claro. Abre. No, sí, va a tocar. También por hecho la piedrita. ¿Sí qué? Es un pollito. Es la viand. Está bien hecho con piedra, bacán, Ay, sabroso. Pollo también, ok. ¿Y este qué es? Ahí está, pasamos. Papita. Papita. Con ese se viene. Ok. Con es los dos se come. ¿Sí? Claro. ¿Se ¿Sí? puede...? Eh, vamos con una porción. Ya. Sí, sí. ¿Dónde se van? ¿Dónde se van? ¿Dónde se van, amigos? Vamos a... Oyón, Oyón. A Oyón. Está lejos tuyo, ¿no? Sí. Está lejos, está lejos. Es como... Pretty cool. Don't judge it, it's in a plastic bag. We have a few potatoes and a chicken. Uh, it's more like a snack that we'll share because we have our own sandwiches, but there we go. And they were very nice. And so he's bringing with his uh, trolley all the food, potatoes and chicken to the whole village as they're having a reunion. Cutting up the potatoes. Apparently they were cooked in the rocks and you can see they're actually pretty smoked. That's pretty nice. Did you know that potatoes were actually from the Andes? Like it's the birthplace of potatoes. There were no potatoes in the rest of the world before it was exported from the Andes. Cool, huh? Little bit of chicken, right here. Barbecue chicken. Looks pretty. Mm. And then we'll make little sandwiches. That was quite the road today. We've crossed many, many small villages, many small farms. It's not as, uh, I'd say, touristic as the Cordillera Blanca. There's like barely any cars. You only see those like mini, tiny minibus that people take to go from village to village. A few people on horses and a few individual cars, but yeah, they're usually packed with people. So you feel it's more like a local taxi kind of system. On those kind of roads, it's really the best way of seeing like how people live in those 
uh, mountainous, remote countryside areas. You see people fabricating the bricks for the house. A lot of people who are like commuting animals, mostly sheep and, and pigs from one place to another. Um, something you see everywhere maybe like 60 percent of the houses that are alongside the main road i mean main road um have it is the campaign painting so politicians probably pay people to come and paint their logo their name the political party logo and what to vote on the election day so you see that on many houses on the side so fascinating <laughs> This place is incredible. I mean, look at that. We've just, just been driving non-stop this whole part. But the reason why I stopped here is you see that car right behind me? This guy probably parks here. There's a little path and then he's got a house over there. There's another house over there and over there you might see something red. It's a red tuk-tuk and a motorbike. So incredible. People, they drive all the way out here and then you know, live their life this way. I and mean, we are hours away from any town, so incredible. This place, validated. Another turn, another laguna. Crazy. We're at 4,650 meters right now, and so it's snowing. It's, it's incredible. I have no idea we were gonna get this. No, me neither. We saw some snow in some of the fields, but lower down in elevation, and we thought, oh, okay, it's fields that are always in the shade. And uh, yeah, we were about to say, oh, it is our first rain in a long time. No, it's our first snow in a long, long time. I think last time we got snow was the USA. Yeah, in Moab, I think. Yeah, in Moab. We ended up in a mine on this road at the summit. There's crazy infrastructures and trucks and people. So we've been like alone for this whole road. And then at the summit, there were like pickup trucks and there's like cables everywhere. There's even a bit of network. Um, it's, a, it's a bit weird. It's a giant, giant mine. We don't know what they actually mine here. And Nick was saying, between the snow and the mining infrastructures, it really feels like we're back in Prudhoe Bay. <laughs> yeah. There's even traffic lights. <laughs> we really changed the environment. This is awesome. <laughs> and between the snow and the mine, you have gems like this one. Look. Whoa, what a color. Woo. Awesome. This mining complex is so big that they even have those signs like the city. Uh, thank you for coming. Have a good trip. <laughs> We're on top. We go down. Yep, back down. Go down. Campsite for the night? Yep. Campsite Not bad. For the night. Not bad. We have the river 
and possibly we could get the view on those mountains over there. And indeed, the next morning... A new morning lost in Peru and this time we have blue sky and it's amazing outside. Woohoo! Oh yeah, nice. Got some cows over there and the glacier right in front, nice. Well, it looks like my forehead is already doing much better. Mathilde's head is really strong. <laughs> oh, I feel like a few more days, but now I don't need the little band-aids anymore. It's just gonna dry out. Nice. The road is still long, and thinking of all the amazing surprises we got the previous day, we cannot wait to see what Peruvian Andes have for us on this new day on the road. It did not last long for us to find something we were not expecting in here. We just found a flamingo in the middle of the mountains. And it's one flamingo. It's like he's completely lost in terms of migration. He's in the wrong place. <laughs> Look at him. Poor guy, we should give him a name. This is Henry the flamingo that lost his family. We crossed a small town and loaded up before launching for the last stretch of remote road of our little challenge. Water, fuel, food, the winning combo. We made it to Oyon, our first stop gas station, because this is where we can get both the fuel but also the water. This is going to be our little recharging stop and then we're back off in the mountain. So we are now in Oyon. I traced out a whole track in the middle of the mountains. I mean, if you look here, it really just crosses the middle of nowhere, going through lagunas. And so the idea is to try and come out the other side. All of this is about 165 kilometers. It will probably take us two days. Now, if anything happens to Albo, it's gonna be hard to get us out. So that's a almost normal road and we're going this way. The idea to crash the next mountain range. All through off road and no villages, no nothing. Let me just ask this guy's name. Hola señor. Sí. Con esta carretera se puede ir hasta um Huaylai. Si, si puede, Huayay. Perfecto. No, porque a mí gusta la, la carretera así. There we go. Every time we ask for a direction, people are like, well, why don't you take the normal road, you know, like the easier road? And we're like, yeah, but we want to go in the mountain range, we want to go see the villages. <laughs> Yeah, we want to take the... We want to go off-road. And off-road we go! <sighs> Nick picks the river and not the bridge. Look at the bridge. Look at the bridge. <laughs> if you've seen our first episode of Peru, you've known we've like already used all our luck credits on crossing a sketchy bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, this is incredible. What's difficult is there's so many nice places and valleys and each valley is nicer than the other one. It just keeps getting better. And when you think like it can't get better than this, it still gets better. 
So the difficulty is that we always have to pull out the drone and we're always filming each valley uh, as if like it's the nicest. And that's the hard part is that we always are like, dang, we should pull out the drone again. So we're gonna do it again here because this is incredible. Look at the road and the mountain there. All right, it's ready. bunch of alpaca here high up in the field. They look so cute. Let's go check them out. Hola. Buenos dias. Buenas. Hello. Look at them. So I read that you recognize alpaca because they have like a lot of like fluffy hair on the forehead and their ears are like more of a roundy shape. Versus llama are more of a of a banana shaped ears. <gasps> Incredible! Out of nowhere, uh, in the valleys, we found this little these little buildings, and all these guys here. They have like 50 sheep over there, and all these alpacas over here, and they're making the wool. Look how cute they are. ¿Cuándo se hace la lana? En marzo. ¿En marzo? Sí, Cada año, una vez al año. Sí. Pero ya hay alpacas que tienen mucho, mucho lana, ¿no? Sí, sí. Que no pueden partido. mover. Corta su luz. ¿Lo que está ojito? Ah, ok, se para que ve. Para que lo ve. Ah, ok, ok. ¿Se quedan aquí todo el tiempo? Sí. O... Dos bajamos, dos se quedan. Ah, ok, ok. Sí. Es una rotación. Sí. They're gathering the alpaca and the sheep to be able to count them and we arrive right at this moment, so that's what they're going to do. And Nikki's helping. So, c'est tout qu'il y en a un qui est passé vers l'autre côté. So, every month of March, they cut the wool of the alpaca. Están contando porque quieren saber si algún se perde. Ah, claro, se la ah. directiva han venido. Uh -huh. Le y va a contar el selector que está ahí. Cada mes viene a contar. Cada vez. How many do you have? 53 alpaca. 53. Yeah. Everyone's here. We're good. Cool. Well, they're good. We're gonna go. <laughs> Crossing the mountain pass now, 4,820 meters, and boom. Ah. <laughs> oh gosh. Can it get nicer? It only gets nicer. Nice sound of brakes. <laughs> we followed up with our road through the mountains only to discover we had actually entered alpaca land. Kind of a Disneyland, but instead of human, you have alpacas. open hills with like tons of dogs around it's a bit scary
gate number 15 <laughs> or oh, I don't know how many there's really a lot we're really in the alpaca valley so there's tons of alpacas everywhere and each field is very well limited in the first 10 gates you're like yay it's fun we're opening and closing gates and the last 15 you're like oh. Open, closed, open, closed. We're finally out of the gorgeous Alpaca Valley. We head through the last mountain range facing the most threatening sky possible. We ended up driving on the edge of a massive haze storm that covered hills around in white. We thought it was snow and then I looked closer because I found it weird and there's no snow on the mountains. No, it's hail. It's actually like those balls of hail from the storm that we actually passed over there. Crazy! On the campsite for tonight there's still a bit of sun we have the view on the lagunas this is the albatros there's a house in construction but there's no one and there's an old old uh, rock house over there that looks really really nice the road we're going to take tomorrow continues this way and is going to be the end of our crossing of the mountain range once we pass on the other side so it's a bit sad because we discovered so much on this crossing. We're going to debrief the entire thing, but first dinner cooking and shower and cleaning the car because it's full of dust. Look at this. Look at her bag. I don't dare like touching it. Oh. The camp is beautiful, but it's freezing. It's actually the highest we've ever slept. It's like 4,600 meters something. This crossing through the mountain range was awesome. The past weeks we were also traveling in the mountains, but it was more touristic places. This one, it was the best way to see like real Peruvian way of life uh, in the countryside, in the mountains. So it was a fascinating few days and we really don't regret to have taken the long road across so yeah super happy yeah it was awesome off-road mostly tons of lagunas uh, a lot of tiny little local villages a lot of farms cottages uh, sheep llama vicuñas uh, alpacas yeah, uh, we got all the animals yeah really really cool <laughs> anyways tomorrow we are also going to go to lima because we noticed there's a few upgrades that we want to do to albatross uh, that we've noticed after a year and four months of travel and um, there's a few little things we want to upgrade so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in the next episode but tomorrow we're on our way to Lima and I think we'll spend a few days there trying to get everything sorted for Albatross 2.0 I like to call it yeah it's the new project of Nick yeah anyway we'll talk about it in the next episode yeah see you next week good night and we're gonna freeze tonight because it is already minus two outside Ugh. next week we have work to do Direction Lima, the crazy chaotic capital city of the country. To be sure you don't miss what's coming up next, subscribe to the channel and see you next week. 
on this pasta packet they give you two like cooking time one is if you live in the mountains and one is if you live in the coast only in Peru 